Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be going over what I did to create a 3D shoe made out of a sugar cookie. I ended up using the Sweet Sugar Bell sandal cookie cutter along with a mini heart and a mini egg to hollow out the inside. I did use tools I had on hand so as to not purchase any additional items. And I do realize that the inside of my cookie did take on a very particular shape. Now I did build up the back of my cookie using three pieces on each side and I did taper each side to be one smaller than the other. Once you have your desired height, you will want to glue all the pieces together with royal icing. I did use medium consistency royal icing. For the tip of the shoe, you will want to shave off excess cookie from the underside of the cookie. We will be sliding underneath there two pieces of wafer paper. The building of the shoe was actually pretty fun. It was very similar to building a gingerbread house. However, when you are working with sugar cookies, they are a bit more delicate. So I was very careful when I was grading off the excess of the edge pieces here. I needed them to be perfectly flush together. They were in an angle to kind of create that, um, that look that a shoe has. Now in hindsight, I probably would have cut the sugar cookie a little bit different. This was my first time making this shoe and like I said, it was kind of a personal challenge. So I did learn a few things along the way. I did find a tool that would have been super helpful. However, I did not have. When placing the tip of the shoe with the two back sides of the shoe, you want to make sure that there is a slight gap in between the two. We will be using wafer paper for the tongue of the shoe. Now here what I did is I shaved off a little bit of the cookie around the edges of uh, the top front of the shoe to kind of give it more of a curved look. Now once all of my pieces were put together, I did cover the cookie with a thin layer of royal icing. I did give it two coats. Of royal icing I did the first one I let it dry and then I went back in a second time the reason for doing this was to give the shoe a bit more stability when I was working with it because it was sugar cookie I didn't want to run the risk of it falling apart as I was holding it to add the different layers of cookie now for the tip of the shoe here I did add a thin layer of royal lines of royal icing however after doing that I realized that I didn't have to do that but nonetheless it did its job. And this is where the fun began. This is where I started to give my shoe dimension. It was a slow process because I did need to wait for each layer to crust or dry before going on to the next. The royal icing that I used was the sugar dough royal icing. And I, I don't know if I ever say that correctly, but it's an awesome royal icing recipe. I love it, it's my go-to all the time. Now, in building the shoe, I wanted it to look similar to a real shoe, so I did give it uh, a lot of different dimensional layers, and I'm gonna be honest with you, at the end of it, at the end of adding all of my layers, it did not look pretty, but I knew I was going to add a little bit more to kind of dress it up and cover up what didn't look all that great.
Now this is where it started to become a little bit more challenging, but it wasn't horrible. As I started to add layers around the curved part of the shoe, I did have to walk around my house with my shoe in hand and rotate the shoe every few minutes so that the icing wouldn't dry lopsided. Now too bad there isn't some sort of device that I can put a shoe on and it would gyrate 360 degrees without falling off to ensure that the icing does dry flat. I did manage for the bottom layers of the shoe to dry pretty flat, but these two curved pieces gave me a little bit of a, of a struggle. But after I added the final details, you can't even tell that it was lopsided to begin with. Now this is where you start to see that some of the icing is drying a little bit lumpy and that was entirely my fault. I was not patient at all when adding my additional layers. I was only waiting about maybe five to seven minutes before I added them and it didn't allow the icing to dry as flat as some of the other pieces unfortunately. But it's okay because once I started to add the additional uh, features to the cookie it actually looked really great and you couldn't even tell. Now the paint that I'm using uh, to paint onto my cookie is the Sugar Prism Edible Food Paint. I absolutely love her powder paint. It smells amazing, like it smells amazing y'all. If you haven't had, if you haven't tried her paint yet, you should. And it tastes really great. It tastes like vanilla. So it doesn't have that weird chemical paint or the chemical taste that a lot of other paints do. And I did use uh, the yellow and pink and the blue for the cookie and that was inspiration from a paper line that was created uh, by Frank Garcia Studios uh, and Prima Marketing. It's from the Dulce Collection. So as you can see the shoe is starting to transform but even at this point I wasn't too too happy with the shoe. Once I started to add the lines and the additional detail to the shoe, the shoe actually took on an entirely different look and I was absolutely happy with how it was turning out. Now I did end up using wafer paper for the tongue of the shoe and I ended up using uh, piping gel to glue the pieces together. I did try to use royal icing to glue the wafer paper onto the cookie and onto itself but it didn't really adhere as quickly as I wanted it to so the piping gel worked great. I did end up making a spring mix to add to the tip of the shoe and that was a lot of fun and really messy but it ended up looking really really great. After adding the sprinkles I went back and I started to paint the detail of the shoe with gold luster dust and that just made the shoe pop even more. And now it's time for the final details. I did recently find out that I can use all of my dies to cut out wafer paper. So I did end up cutting this cute little bow using one of my dies and my Sizzix die cutting machine. I did end up painting the bow using the Sugar Prism edible food paint along with that little flower in the center using a paper punch. Again, that was my newest discovery and I look forward to using my dies and wafer paper for future projects. 
And the last bit was to add a few more sprinkles and to add my name to the back of the shoe. The entire making of this shoe was a learning process and it was a personal challenge to myself. I did end up enjoying how the shoe came out. It was better than expected. I did realize that there are things that I could have done differently, but for now, this will work.